so here it is our next and final session of this wonderful faculty development program attended by all our focused participants today in this final session we have invited a very very senior industry professional in the form of shri aniruddha punde sir i have just sent you or shared the profile rich profile of uh, uh, shri aniruddha punde who holds a masters degree in mechanical engineering from iit roorkee and he has a vast international industrial experience of over 32 years including head of profit center product design manufacturing processes and many things he is trained on knowledge management at uh, indian institute of management ahmedabad he is a certified six sigma uh, black belt and uh, holder aniruddha has extensive experience of implementing black belt projects and training in his capacity as a master black belt so many points in his uh, introduction uh, and uh, currently he is working as a operations head at filtrex technologies bengaluru uh, rest of the things about his profile have been mentioned over there a very senior uh, person uh, and we are really really fortunate uh, that uh, such a distinguished personality is uh, here to guide us to speak on various aspects his topic is manufacturing excellence a key to business sustenance uh, i request aniruddha punde sir to begin his session over to you sir okay so namaskar namaste and good afternoon, good afternoon. so thank you so much uh, rajiv ji for all these uh, kind words so kind of you uh, let me share the screen and see are you able to see that sir yes yes wonderful so first of all i am really honored and privileged to talking to all of you and uh, before i start uh, the discussions i would like to congratulate the department of mechanical engineering of government polytechnic nanded for organizing such a fabulous program i can only imagine the challenges that need to be overcome in today's condition to organize such an event it takes lot of efforts to successfully and flawlessly organize the program once again congratulations thank you sir i am sure everyone would immensely benefit from this program personally i am grateful to the organizer and the organizers and the program coordinator raju sakarkar ji to consider me worthy of sharing my thoughts and experiences with all of you thank you so much sir Thank so you. this is what we are going to talk today today uh, we'll be discussing a few aspects related to manufacturing in excellence and before i start i wish to humbly mention that you know i am going to share with you my thoughts experiences i am not big expert rather actually far from it i am more of a practitioner who is into this field and i am practicing implementing some of the things that i will be sharing with you or i'll be talking to you well this is the quote from albert einstein and this is what i practice every day you can't explain it simply you don't understand it well enough so the motive is to keep things simple make them simple not to complicate 
So, and that's what we will try to do today as well. We'll keep things simple. I'll try to share things in a very simple manner as much as possible. So let's begin. See, are you too busy or too occupied with what we are doing? Do we look around the surrounding world? Maybe there is a better technology, better solution that is available to fight the battle that is on our hands and we are battling every day. Are we open to new concepts? Or, or we are too arrogant, complacent. I am big enough. I have everything. I am the best. I am the leader. I don't need to change. Is that the mindset? an organization has and with such a mindset can an organization progress what is the culture that you are developing in your organization and i would say this is in short a story in for many organizations today today more than any time any time in the past every organization must have what we call as a growth mindset and a very open mindset is required to progress or achieve manufacturing excellence. The organization must be able to embrace new concepts. And I would say throughout our discussions today, many a times you will hear these words of mindset, thinking, or our way of thinking etc. Now, let us see another statement from Mark Twain. Such a profound statement. Continuous improvement is better than delayed perfection. Now, what happens many a times in an organization and whenever I am referring to an organization, I am referring to a manufacturing company or a factory. Let us say to put it in a very simple word. So many times we just get lost in seeking perfection and we lose many opportunities or I would say we waste many improvement opportunities which are just in front of us. And an organization must strive for improving the processes continuously. And I, there is another statement I would like to show you from Shigo Shingo, who is, you know, one of the, I would say, founder members or someone who has contributed immensely to the concept lean. So these two statements, they are very strong statements. It's equally important, you know, Improvement doesn't mean that we do something which we were already be doing. We do need to do something which we have never done before. I recollect another statement from Albert Einstein that you cannot solve the problems with the same mindset with which they were already, they were in fact created in the first place. So if we want to progress, if we want to solve problems continuously, improve continuously, we need that kind of a mindset. Now, having said that, what is basically when we say a manufacturing excellence, what does it mean? So manufacturing excellence broadly is a continuous improvement of your operations to reduce waste, increase profits, and gain the winning edge. And equally important is second statement, that manufacturing excellence is an ongoing and never-ending process to improve your business every way you can. Now mark the words here. It's a continuous improvement. That means this is a journey. It's not, you know, that you end. It, it, it is something we do continuously. That means it also relates, whenever we say continuous improvement, 
it relates to say kaizen which we will broadly touch upon reduce waste another important word this is where the concept of lean plays a key role and notice the objective objective is increase profits that's what the organizations want to achieve or that is where they are in the business nobody is in the business for the sake of charity a manufacturing organization of course wants to increase profits winning gauge another keyword that is a key to keep you ahead of your competition all the time and what all this basically means is once once you achieve these the keywords that i highlighted increase profits gain a winning gauge through continuous improvement reducing waste that is what leads to the business sustenance and that is what today we are talking about it is said to be a mindset that embraces certain principles and tools to create sustainable improvement so when you want to create an improvement and that to a sustainable improvement which doesn't fritter out over a period of time over the years you need to have that mindset that's what i said in the beginning that the mindset will very often hear this today and which are the tools that lead to us primarily lean six sigma and kaizen and in our discussions today these are the three tools i would briefly talk about or try to explain to you and another important quotation from shigo shingo lean is a way of thinking not a list of things to do so that's what very very critical thing that it's a way of thinking every day each and every step that you take each and every decision you take the philosophy needs to be ingrained or what we call as an internalized whether it is kaizen whether it is six sigma whether it is lean it's not that something you do for the sake of showing off or taking as an initiative do few projects and then it drops out now why manufacturing excellence so because the manufacturing capacity it represents a massive investment and that is difficult to relocate or sell off immediately the flexibility and the ability to act quickly or to react to market changes is as is difficult to cultivate and then that makes them enormously important for a competitive advantage now despite the economic volatility of the past decades let us say the leading manufacturers they have found a consistent success and you can see it around them there are many organizations which are consistently are on the top and it's not mere luck that keeps them on top so they enjoy better inventory returns they enjoy greater operating margins and higher overall let us say higher shareholder returns and and that is of course compared to their competition or rivals when there are downturns they are able to find still find the volumes and revenues to support their major assets and when we say major assets that's an inventory or uh, sorry that's the investment that they have done and when the economy rebounds they are positioned to take advantage of that rebound and that opportunity now they think and act both for short term as well as for long term gains and when downturn hit they are quickly able to find the volumes revenues to support major assets and these leaders they think act quickly now how do these companies manage to consistently stand out as i said before it is not something that you know it is merely a luck that it is favoring them so they are continuously working towards or achieving 
manufacturing excellence or operational excellence and that is the key that is the answer of their sustained growth if i say continuing with why we need a manufacturing excellence and what are the factors which are common when we say to all the top performers that i described you one is definitely a company wide focus on the performance now these leading manufacturers they get most out of their employees by accurately evaluating their performance and rewarding those who perform the best they create cultures of strong performance and that is led from top down by the ceos who really encourage well thought of and relevant policies targets and that too at all levels of organizations these leaders also seek a commitment to closely track those targets and reward the top performers second thing is the aligned and disciplined culture now what do we mean by that the leading manufacturers or the companies who are towards manufacturing excellence on that journey or having achieved that they embrace consistent corporate cultures that align that part of the entire enterprise and that is a very important key aspect that we should understand for example at one company the successful implementation of an aligned corporate culture started at the top rather in most of the companies that is what it is expected to start with it's always a top down approach what is stable and flexible operations or manufacturing which calls for you know uh, building a stable and flexible operations in a difficult or today's uh, termu turbulent business environment the stability and flexibility are very vital for managing short terms or long term ups and downs by creating a long term success path now these leading manufacturers they seek to stabilize internal factors such as uh, let us say processes the programs strict design controls use of simulation techniques which all reduces iterations changes all these things they seek flexibility <coughs> sorry to address those areas let us say customer feedback driven operations point number 4 so they are continuously in touch with their customers that what the customers want what do they need addressing this question throughout their organizations or operation is a key which practices uh, the leading manufacturer rather the key practice which is incorporated by the key and leading manufacturers some use customer service metrics for their operation planning while some could be using their customers or involving them in the key decision makings quality processes using direct customer feedback is also an approach adopted by many companies and that all also then leads them to be on top of their performance as well as be ahead of their competition talking about internal and external partnership they forge a very strong internal and external partnership strong partnership with the suppliers we saw the strong partnership with the customers then they have an very effective internal and external collaboration that can generate significant advantages so all these five factors are key to the success and moving towards manufacturing excellence now let us talk about 
some basic tools that lead to the manufacturing excellence. Now, many of you would have heard five years long back, the industry has graduated to six S, meaning the sixth S is of course safety. And these are, I always consider is a safety and the five S is a very basic need for survival. Kaizen, which we saw in the initial phase is a continuous improvement part. Six Sigma is something which is a philosophy used for reducing the variation, which then leads to the defect reduction. And of course, lean uh, as a waste elimination. But these are some of the tools that the organizations use or deploy in their journey towards manufacturing excellence or to achieve manufacturing excellence. I have shown here a few, very few rather, three, four of them, considering the available time that we have. And we will dwell on these in somewhat detail to the extent the time permits. However, one should always remember that these are the means and not an end. So these are the tools and means which take us to our final objective or end that is achieving the manufacturing excellence for a company. Now, what is the need for, let us say, the Kaizen culture? One minute, let me take it down because I can't see that. Okay. You can see this, right? One minute. Where it has gone. It's hang or what? No, sir, it is visible. No, but I, the next thing is not coming, right? No, so, sir. Blank. Uh, exa exactly. Let me do something again. Maybe I have to stop sharing and share again one minute. Good. Technical glitches. Moment. I hope this works. Can you see? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, visible. It is visible, but it is not moving yes. forward. Okay, no problem. Hold on. That happens sometimes. Hope we can see. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Now it is going up. So these these people they didn't want to come on screen. Looks like. <laughs> oh, let's see here again the uh, 
mindset is the theme. What kind of a mindset that we are building? Are we same that we have a possibility to improve? But we are still into our thought, no, I don't want to embrace any new concept. So what is this? This is uh, Kaizen. Many of you, I guess, we know that this is a Japanese word. When Kai means change and Zen means good. So something which is a Japanese word, which we are looking at the change that brings in some improvement, something better than what we were doing so far. Well, let us understand what a Kaizen means. And, you know, this is something 365, 1 raised to 365. And what is the sum? It's still 1. So, if I do something, same thing every day. This is where I stay. Now I try to improve a little bit from 1 to 1.01. It's a small improvement. And again, same, raised to 365. And let us see the change. So that is the power of small Kaizen improvements. Small changes, small improvements every day can lead to a wonderful overall improvement in the organization, the way organization works, the way organization performs. That's what in Marathi we say thembe thembe tare saaze. in Hindi they say boon boon se sagar banta hai and that's what it is. That's the basic philosophy of Kaizen that you do small improvements which are done in a very large number in a company or in an organization would have very significantly <clears throat> high contribution. And more than that, that creates a culture of continuous improvement in the organization and which, we, which is then helpful to embrace new concepts, different concepts, may it be Six Sigma, may it be Lean, may it be any other part. Some examples of Kaizen, many of you would have heard, I'm sure nothing great about it. There was a company which was manufacturing toothpaste and the, there was a big sales conference to see how the sales can go up. So many ideas came out starting from discount to price reduction to what not. And somebody said, okay, we have an opening of say two millimeters to the test. Just make it maybe 2.01 or 2.02. So that whenever you press an extra toothpaste automatically comes out. And they say that the company was immensely benefited when this idea was implemented. I remember a story of a soap factory and these stories are, which are very famous and already been quoted many times that when they are manufacturing soaps and on the last conveyor, when they are going for packing, many a times there was a missing soap inside the carton. Now what to do, how to detect that? Because the people were complaining that there is no soap inside. Again, a lot of technology was thought about. Somebody said simply, air fan lagado. So if it is empty, the box will simply fly away. And the people like me who are everyday working on the shop floor, they know the importance of such very simple ideas and what they can contribute. This is again a story of the space where they wanted to know how to write down. And then the story goes, Nations put in a lot of money for a pen to work. And then somebody said, why don't you use a pencil? Now, understand the concept. Which story is right or wrong is not, a, or true is not an important, but a very small idea, a concept, which, you know, can immensely benefit an organization and save a lot of money. And what are the, the basic funda is you do, do more with less. That's what increase your profits. What are the objectives for Kaizen? Basic four purposes. Very strong statement. Do it 
try to do an improvement which is easier better faster and cheaper the same thing that you are going to do or you are doing look at these four objectives when you are looking to improve make it easy make it better make it faster make it cheaper and also he is very clear in saying in that order of priority so the priority is can i make it easy so that it it creates less fatigue can i make it better can i make it faster can i make it cheaper so these are the some of the objectives make it improve the safety improve productivity improve quality reduce the cost what is the mindset that we are looking at every day some improvement must happen somewhere in the organization preferably in every work area so while returning home when while you are packing your bags to go home ask yourself what i changed today what i improved today did i do that or i just came to work worked eight hours and didn't make an improvement that's the mindset an organization need to build while moving towards manufacturing excellence which as we saw ultimately leads to the business sustenance another highlight i would like to show the difference between kaizen versus innovation kaizen of course is a are small improvements and innovation gives you a big jump whereas innovation gives you jump like this from here kaizen makes you improve further in absence of kaizen you are likely to drop down so you make an innovation and then allow it to drop then you have next innovation you reach here but in between when an organization has a kaizen mindset from here every day every time somebody is continuously improving the things then the next innovation takes you here so from here to here is the contribution by the kaizen mindset and that is what is shown here a difference between kaizen and innovation you jump to a next stage whereby you crawl talking about six sigma this of course a cartoon the funny side of it but six sigma basically is a system to eliminate defects defect reduction is the main objective of six sigma and i would like to tell you uh, i don't know remember the good uh, book called good to great i think it's by jim collins so what he mentions is why many companies are good and why they are not best the reason he says many companies are not best because they are good and if you remember the first cartoon that i showed you that that's the because it's basically the mindset i'm i'm good i i don't need to change i didn't need to do anything and that is the reason that many companies still operate at around 3 sigma or 4 sigma levels and that is actually operating below customer expectations and when we say 3 sigma level of a company or a process then it it amounts to let us say 99.74% of uh dppm or the total opportunities for achieving the success and what are the reasons this is these are some key things which main companies they remain and are not able to progress they remain at 3 sigma or 4 sigma there is a past success you know as i said yeah we have been successful we are doing good why should i do something different why should i put in more efforts or many companies have lot of dependency on inspection and rework and that is actually a very bad bad i would say psychology that i inspect and then i allow things to go only after inspection many companies have a psychology philosophy that they they reward a firefighting behavior 
people show look i have solved the problem and then they feel wow what is a great job done there is little focus little focus means very less or almost no focus on measuring <coughs> various quality metrics quality parameters quality measurements most important which i have experienced throughout my career is this one that functional silos which you know basically inhibits collaboration between departments when we say functional silos that is what is between different departments design fails why should i do this engineering says why should i do that or we all know how there is a always a tussle a fight or a difference of opinion between departments <clears throat> and most important it finally a lot of reliance on trial and error that is in a six sigma parlance we'll call it you know when they do something they do it as one factor at a time kind of thing rather than doing as a design of experiments for all these thing six sigma basically is a business improvement strategy and a strategy that work for entire enterprise entire organization and the philosophy is you remove the defects from your processes so that by removing variations you remove defects and achieve excellence <clears throat> now you see this chart shows you how the defects exist when we are in a company there is an engineering department sales marketing purchase manufacturing distribution sales everywhere each function has the list of i have just mentioned here a few the list of various errors that can occur within the department errors in bill of material hard design which makes a lot of time to make assembly outdated technologies expensive material and what not so manufacturing typically a lot of scrap a lot of rework down times over times high inventory obsolescence warranties all these defects they exist and finally they erode the profit of the organization so if i talk about the cost there are some things we call as a visible costs and we call as a hidden cost now what are the visible costs is the scrap there is a river there is a warranty in any company this is something which mostly is easily visible but there are underlying as you can see here beneath the uh, surface there are lot what call what we call as hidden costs and that depends on how far how in depth you want to look so it's a at what efficiency i am converting the material raw material into finished product how effectively i am using the resources am i using more material than that is required or that is prescribed in the bill of material how is the cost of reinspection redesigning how many customer complaints or customer problems are there what is the cost of it all these things many of the organizations or rather this is there in every organization and the companies which are deploying new tools want to achieve manufacturing excellence have the continuous business sustenance they look they scratch the surface as deep as possible and try to reduce or eliminate all these costs so in short what is a six sigma that's a it's a sigma is a greek letter of course but in a six sigma parlance it denotes a variation which is <coughs> sorry and that defines the spread of the process sigma is a standard deviation and that standard deviation is used to denote how much is the variation in a process and this value of sigma is used as a metric to indicate how well any process is performing the more the sigma value that means more is the variation and you have 
you are likely to have more problems. You are likely to have more defects. And as I have been mentioning, it's basically a philosophy to make process improvement with a focus on eliminating the defect by reducing the variation. Now, somewhere we saw that three sigma means 99.47% and all that. So uh, most of the most of us feel like 99 is wonderful, yeah, so nice. Why are we worried? So let us briefly have a look at what 99% means. And when we say, in especially in a manufacturing company, if I say 99%, what it means. But before coming to the practical meaning, let us understand. It broadly means that we can have an unsafe drinking water for 15 minutes per day. It can also mean in a big city, there could be about 20,000 people suffering from food poisoning. Or there is a delayed or unsafe takeoff or landing in a uh, very busy airport per day. Or in today's parlance, there could be close to 500,000 wrong deliveries per year by couriers or these days by, let us say, any uh, Swiggy or Zomato. Because, see, the 99% concept was good when overall the volumes were less. But now when we talk about humongous volumes, 99% is no more good. And that is where we must, the companies must achieve the uh, or work for Six Sigma, adopt and now what is what, what does it mean when we say we want to improve a Sigma level or we want to reduce a variation so for that we need to understand what is a variation, uh, we know and we have been teaching we have been taught that no two things are alike or equal of course, no two faces in the world are alike or even identical twins. We say they are equal, but they are not exactly alike. So what it means? It means that variation is a very natural phenomenon and that's universal. And we also say this, that five fingers of our hand all are different and all these things or no two persons are alike. But in a manufacturing parlance, a variation means that's the, that's the main reason that many a times components do not always fit together. That's the reason that quality levels of same product produced on the same line, using same parts, same suppliers, everything, still the quality levels are different. And that's a fact of life. But many a times the fact of life, our challenge is and the goal is to manage this variation in such a way that it does not affect my customer, it does not affect my performance, it does not affect my profits. Now you see the, as the stigma level changes for a process, for a company, the how the performance changes. And you can see that when we are talking about the Six Sigma, then generally it is considered that a any process, any normal process with a very controlled process and a normal variation is likely to shift by 1.5 sigma. And then that is where is the 3.4% defect per million opportunities. DPMO is defect per million opportunities. And that is where the percentage rejection then lies. And that is where the yield performance is. So if I am inputting 100, this is the output I am getting. And this is basically is the Six Sigma quality levels that the companies strive to achieve. And there are, let me tell you, many companies have achieved this. Because personally, I am working with Six Sigma, let us say, maybe from 2004. So it's not something a big or new concept. And there are companies, of course, have achieved these things. And how a company should work towards it. What are the different activities they are involved in this? So basically, it's a, it's, it's a collection of statistical tools 
there are very many many statistical measurements and then it basically tells us how good or how bad are the products the services and any process and it of course helps us to correct the course establish where we want to get gauge the pace and allows us to reach to our goal and that is customer satisfaction it's a basically an improvement tool there are many many tools many statistical concepts of you know p p value t test normality and all those things into the six sigma concept basically it's a business strategy which has to be again which has to come from top down and it helps to achieve you a lot competitive edge over your uh, competitions or your rivals of course as we improve the six sigma of the process or the sigma rating of the process the product quality improves because the variation goes down and when the product quality improves of course the cost goes down and again as i said it's a philosophy if a company works on six sigma for few days one or two projects are done and post that everything is forgotten then they are not likely to get all the gains that are possible to achieve through six sigma various people in a company have different roles to play different responsibilities when the companies are working towards six sigma there are executives what the executives do they are they own the vision they rather they set up the vision that what an organization wants to do they give the direction they ensure the integration between various functions and they basically lead the change who are the champions the champions they are basically owners project owners for implementing solutions they are they work as mentors and manage basically black belts and green belts the master black belt depending on the size of a company could be one could be two or three they are full time working on the projects they train and coach the black belts they help champion and they ensure that the the basic six sigma drive is on course and the projects are completed in time the gains are realized new opportunities are identified <coughs> with the help of champions black belt again is a full time people they work and they facilitate problem solving they undertake projects green belts are the people who don't work full time but they are part time supporting the black belts learning the new tools implementing and supporting in the projects and of course there are other projecting members who will do their job along with black belts and green belts and finally the all employees when they are here so all these people they have the responsibility to ensure that everyone in the company they understand the vision understand the concept and they start applying all these concept into their day to day job and work areas that is most important as i have been repeatedly saying the idea is not to just do couple of projects and then leave it and what are the strategies that can work at various level the executives who are at the top of business level they use six sigma for improving market share increasing profitability and of course the long term viability of the organization the managers at operation level they use six sigma to improve the yield reduce the variation and reduce the cost may it be labor cost or material cost and at individual process level the engineers can use six sigma to reduce defect variation improve process bring the capability improve the capability which will lead to better customer satisfaction again a broadly broad explanation of six sigma concept there in as a methodology it is defined as you know why why is an output any output 
is a function of x and x are all the input variables that go in the process so y is a function of x a simple mathematical formula and whether where should the company focus on y or on x so what is the y y is a dependent variable which is an output or which is an effect of something which shows as a symptom and which something we can monitor whereas the x from x1 to x2 x3 xn whatever it is they are independent variables and they serve more as an input they are the cause which give this effect or they are the problems because of which you see the symptoms so of course very naturally we know that it makes sense to act on them so the six sigma activity they they select proper issues proper problems and then find out what are the variables which are causing these problems and then work on these variables bring them under control so that you achieve what you want as an output and of course with a philosophy that you work on the 80s and so which is actually the uh, i would say that the 20% of the things could be causing you 80% of the problem so that's what because if every day today in the company we use call as 80s so these are the 80s but they are vital few and then they cause the problems 80% of the problems are caused by 20% of the variables so six sigma is that activity which is focusing on the variables to reduce the variation within them so that your output is more predictable and more consistent now let us talk little bit on lean and again a to start with it's not easy being lean of course but what is a what is it lean let us say this slide shows the outline of manufacturing history you know as as it evolved around some period maybe centuries from a craft which is basically you know customer specific product made to some specific customer which has then the craft when we are at that has no repeatability and then each product is unique there are a lot of variabilities in the quality and of course it is expensive of course today we buy these things more as a designer product but from craft we have shifted to mass now what is a mass production of course which has brought in lot of interchangeability there is lot of we worked with division of labor providing employment to hundreds on hundreds of people the assembly lines are there the variation has reduced the low variety low variability where fold worked on that from there now we are moving towards lean you know where the idea is that you catch or you are able to work with very high variety not that here the idea was for example when we were in those days maybe just one or two models of the car today you see even a single company has several models so how to deal with those models every day in the shop floor and still produce with almost zero defect and work with small batches and work with a six sigma quality that is where the how the broad way i would say the manufacturing has moved now what is lean i would say lean is, lean is something you know when we cut a rock and make an art out of it now why so because basically lean is elimination of anything that is not absolutely required to deliver a quality product or service and of course on time to the customer so that is what we do when we are making an art out of a rock you take out everything that is not required it's basically and fundamentally different business logic it's eliminating all the waste all unnecessary things that you actually don't need to do 
to deliver what the customer wants. It lean links value activity in a continuous sequence. We will see that when we go next. And this is again a very strong and a true statement which we experience every day when we work in a company or in a manufacturing environment that only a small fraction of total time and effort in an organization adds value for end customer. And really so, when we drill down each processes on value adding, non-value adding and whatnot, finally we realize or anybody will realize that very few, very few of the total actions actually add value. So rest all is called as non-value adding activity and let us We'll see the details. Now, like Six Sigma or Manifest, let us understand why lean. And all these things are there. So as, as this slide shows you, uh, it is, we have to continuously minimize our operating cost. As you can see here, the cost is value added and non-value added. When I see what is a profit for me, it's a price minus cost. And I have no control on the price. Today's world price is dictated by the market, by the customer. The customer decides how much I want to pay for a certain product. And if it is priced more, the customers, they go for an alternate. So to increase this, the only possibility that is left with is to continuously reduce this. Now, when I go to the cost, the cost is the cost of all the activities that are involved to make a product. And it is a sum of value added activities and non value added activities. Even a non value added activities are can be subsequently classified into two groups that there are two types of non-value adding activities. One is, it is non-value adding, but I simply cannot do without it. I have to do it. But there are important and activities where I should focus on are the non-value adding activities and which are not necessary. And that actually reduces the cost and then increases the profit. Now, I would also like to highlight, like even today, where I work, we have again a goal lean by 2023. And it's not only a goal at my factory level, it's a corporate right from very top. So maybe about eight, $10 billion business we are talking about to be lean by say 2023. So what I would like to highlight, it's not only something which is to be done at factory or People think it's for factory or it's not for sales or it's not for design or it's not for maybe marketing, but that's not the case. The lean is everywhere for entire organization. Okay. We had seen this in the, in, uh, at the beginning, if you recollect. And as this slide implies, you know, it's high time we have to minimize our operating cost. This does not mean that, you know, it's a cost cutting or any feature cutting. Giving everything, we have to minimize the cost. And that is where this philosophy comes in picture. It is, it is the way of thinking. It's not that today I will do this, tomorrow I'll do this. Every activity that we do and the mindset gets trained everybody starts thinking in the same language that here, what is unnecessary, what all things are really value adding, what all things are not value adding. And this exercise continue every day to finally go to the lean level. Now, when we are talking about the lean, there is a definitely a paradigm shift as it's shown here between these two things. If we talk about customer satisfaction, when we were... Uh, at the level of mass production, as I showed a few slides back. So the, what market wants and engineers think, the 
just large quantities at somewhat statistically accepted quality, what we talked about at Six Sigma level. But now here, when we say talk about lean, it makes what customer wants with zero defects, but when they want it and only the quantities they order. That is where you hear lots of concepts of just in time, low inventory, lean inventory, and whatnot. If we talk about the leadership, it was more by executive commands, but here it is more of a vision and broad participation from everyone. We experience it every day in our working. There is a participation right from the operator level and what we call as many a times as situational leadership. When we talk at the organizational level, it changes from individualism to the team-based operations. If we talk about external relation, which we are earlier only based on the price, here we many a times talk about long-term relationship. And if it is information management, then earlier it was more of a poor management based on some reports generation, taking out the data, taking out and deriving the conclusions. From there, it moves to more of a better management of the entire data with visual controls and which is maintained by all employees at different levels, right from shop floor, right up to the CEO of the company. There are many lean tools, which many of you or all of you must be knowing. Of course, we are not going to touch on them. Each one can have a one day session, but then first in first out, rapid tool change that is called mainly an SMED, single minute exchange of die. There are TPMs, single piece flow, on-time deliveries, Kanban, sale manufacturing and all that. There are many. What are basically the lean principles? Now, basically specify what is the value in the eyes of customer, what they want and in what quantity and when. Then identify all the steps within the company that actually add to that value that's called as you know value stream that end-to-end -end process mapping which is creating the value and what we call as create the value flow how the value is flowing from different stations from start to end and strive for perfection continuously eliminating the successive layers of waste or different layers, which every time, every day you go on the shop floor or you look at the any activity or process, you are able to find out, hey, why should I do this? Can I do it? Going back to what we saw earlier, can I do it in an easier way, better way, simpler way, or on a more at lower cost? What is a value adding activity so this is called these are all the activities within the company or a supply chain or a value stream which basically add value or for which the customer is willing to pay or that's the value he is buying and in a very simple language what it means is any activity that changes the size shape fit form or function during the manufacturing process. That is what adds the value. Rest all things, like if I am moving the material from stores to the shop floor, it's not adding any value. The customer doesn't pay for that movement. So this is called as the value adding activity. Now, what is a non-value adding activity? I, I gave you an example that if I'm moving the material or I'm just storing an inventory, so it's not adding any value, rather it's a cost. So all these activities that actually do not contribute directly to the customer's need or customer's requirements, they are non-valuating activities. 
the these are activities they actually consume some resources because then and then that is why they are the cost but they do not contribute to meeting customers demands or requirements so that is, these are all non value adding activities and sometime back i mentioned that there are activities which are necessary to do but so they are called as necessary non value adding like same example that unless i move the material i cannot make but then the actions can be that how the movement can be less or can the movement be avoided in a day if i am moving something 100 times can it be brought down to 10 times if i am moving something for 500 meters can it be reduced to 10 meters these are the then actions we take to reduce the effect of those non value adding activities now all these things what we in the lean philosophy are called as a waste so any such activity that absorb resources but does not add any value is a waste and very important statement to consume and understand and internalize is this that waste is so often in front of us that we always don't see it it's there and we have we experiences every day today we realize then we wonder come on we are doing this for so many years how come we didn't realize it and that's where is the mindset and internalization comes and that is where once again this statement from shigo shingo is very important the most dangerous kind of waste is the waste we do not recognize so it's there it's in front of us and we never recognize it and then that's dangerous obviously why because if you are not able to recognize it how are you able to eliminate or reduce it so this is these are the eight best of lean manufacturing the simple way we remember them is called as team wood t standing for transportation i for inventory m for motion w for waiting o o is over processing or over production and d is defect and of course of late the eighth waste that is added is the untapped resource or the brain, brain power so all these if you can think these are all wastes they don't add any value nobody pays for it but of course they consume resources and that's why they are only the costs so just a lean summary lean is we say is just not just only for manufacturing it's for everybody it's not a quick fix it's not easy and it it's a journey in itself and we have to be patiently working on then i gave this example or i said this before we have to just peel out one by one one by one all layers of non value adding or wastes and then come out with reducing your cost and of course when you do that you get the competitive success now very broadly how lean and industry 4.0 they go hand in hand now all this that you are reading it's very easy to get you know overwhelmed by all this techno technology jargon but however industry 4.0 is really i would say nothing but an extension of lean manufacturing but of course with some serious new i would say tech enabled uh, capabilities and i will illustrate it in the next slide now what industry 4.0 promises that overall goals and benefits are focused on reducing defects and wastage improving productivity reducing input costs optimize supply chain and inventories and what not and maybe that's what you would have heard in last few days and this is no different than the goal of lean manufacturing it's just that the technology can do much more today something which i was doing with lot of efforts few years back or maybe a decade back can be done very easily with the technology that is available today 
and let us see this what i mean now lean tools they help manufacturers bring down change over time that is the flexibility so they are enable one production line to efficiently produce multiple products sensors and softwares can automatically identify products parts and they instantly load the necessary program that's what we do today just with a touch of a finger lot of different programs or tools that can be done without much of a manual intervention one of the major goal for lean as we saw was the reduce waste and that include inventory costs of course not today's erps or softwares they trigger automatic part replacement based on real time inventory and that's what you see in you know big malls and everywhere that the the logistics and the supply chain is very lean they only have keep something which the consumer is likely to buy in next few days and as the moment it is consumed with the kanban process kanban concept of lean it is replaced immediately self inspection let us say they reduce today today's machines they are able to detect the defects by themselves or any abnormality on the process so all these things are enabled because of the latest technology and sensors that are available if i talk about let us say shop floor management that's production planning shop floor management all these are processes then they are adapted to production changes to better plan and co control the production again the new erps and uh, on on what i would say on the spot confirmations of production the data mergers all that things are very easily possible use of data across and other processes because of the new technology new erps is available visual aids let us say for safety signals to improve is available because of industry 4.0 preventive maintenance new technology help immensely from prevention we are now even moving to predictive maintenance so with sensors and other things it's very easy to identify when the part is likely to fail and we don't need to even wait for it to fail or even plan there are processes available to collect the customer feedback on time online and use it to make further improvements machine down times as i said very easily reduced and of course there is a data driven the, all the processes that are collecting and analyzing customer feedback using this to drive product design manufacture is helping industry to do the things far better far quickly and easily compared to what we were doing earlier and i think that's all i have so thank you so much for i think i am well in time leaving 7 minutes to answer any question anyone has yeah i would yeah. be glad thank you very much uh, anirudh sir thank you so my much my pleasure such a, uh, any the first hand information from uh, the industry stalwart on kaizen and uh, all the related philosophies for manufacturing excellence especially mechanical people who want to ask any queries please everybody is welcome randar we are ahe apan when with we have we are well within our time or someone can even put it into the chat i don't know if he is enable yes sir na chinde sir kai vicharacha hai khas karun mechanical meshram sir 
अरुण मेश्राम सर का विचार मेकैनिकल एक प्रोसेस मध्य अपन सीपी सीपी के मीनिंग बरोबर प्रोसेस एनालिसिस मध्य बरोबर सर वेरिएशन इन प्रोसेस रिडक्शन मेथड को नहीं पुनः संग जस अपन सी सिग्मा मेथड मध्य सीपी सीपी के कंट्रोल लिमिट का वेरिएशन शब्द नहीं वेरिएशन इन प्रोसेस शुड बी रिड्यूस इन डिफरेंट इन सिक्स सिग्मा प्रोसेस बरोबर नहीं नहीं तुम्हें बयाच गोषी क्लब के मुख्य सीपी इट्स अ प्रोसेस कैपेबिलिटी सीपी के प्रोसेस कैपेबिलिटी इंडेक्स बरबर है सीपी इज अपर स्पेसिफिकेशन लिमिट माइनस लोअर स्पेसिफिकेशन लिमिट डिवाइडेड बाय सिक्स सिग्मा जिथे पर सिग्मा आला सिग्मा सीग्मा स्टैंडर्ड डेविएशन सीपीके इज लोअर ऑफ तुम्हारा अपर स्पेसिफिकेशन माइनस मीन डिवाइडेड बाय थ्री सिग्मा कि लोअर स्पेक माइनस थ्री मीन डिवाइडेड बाय थ्री सिग्मा हतला जो कमी है ती सीपी के वैल्यू वेरिएशन कमी कर प्रोसेस माय गॉड सॉरी एखाद जादू की छड़ी अती तो खूब बर पस कहीं नस अपने क्या वे मैं एक मिनट जरा एक्सप्लेन करू राजीव सर करा करा अच्छा सो कस ना मैं तुम्हारा एखाद प्रैक्टिकल एक्जाम्पल देखो कि समझा कि एक आउटपुट मी बनो तो मी तुम्हाला जे दाखोल की बाई वाय इज इक्वल टू एफ एक्स सो वील जस्ट टेक ए व्हेरी हायपोथेटिकल एक्झाम्पल दॅट माय वाय इज लेट अस से व्हॉट आय मेक टुडे एक माझा ब्लॉक आहे त्याला लेंथ आहे त्याला आयडी आहे त्याला ओडी आहे असं सगळं काही आहे आणि मी बरंचसं काहीतरी मटेरियल घेऊन ते सगळं प्रोसेस करून आम्ही ते बनवतो नाव इट हॅज लॉट ऑफ इनपुट फॅक्टर्स म्हणजे व्हेरिएबल्स आहे आय विल टेक सम व्हेरी सिम्पल थिंग्स विच वी वी कॅन जस्ट uh understand let us say it's a temperature let's say it's a pressure and maybe say cooling time something like that so these are three factors and then you will find je ami roz soft floor var bagto samjha ta yachat variable kay hu shakto ki okay i have a range of pressure let us say the pressure that is applied is 4 bar to 6 bar karan mi kay continuous roz pressure thiu shakat nahi then we may realize ki nahi yaar ye this is a big range 4 to 6 or we also find that sometimes one block is pressed at 4.5 bars next was when the next block was pressed it was at 4.8 bar after that it was 4.2 then so everything is within the range but each block is pressed at different pressure and that time the temperature of block was different so variation he assess then lot of efforts are made ki mala mag to pressure how can i reduce the variation in that pressure so instead of 4.4 bar to 6 bar can i reduce the range for from 4 and 1/2 bar to 5 and 1/2 bar or further i can reduce it from 5 to 5.2 because i may find with trial and error or with does and all that king when the pressures are fakt pressure madhe jar variation fakt 0.2 bar cha jhalo tar maza product far changla banta आणि मग त्याच्याकरता आपल्याला एफर्ट्स करावे लागतील की आता व्हॉट आय नीड टू डू टू कीप दॅट प्रेशर विद इन दॅट रेंज मग इट मे कॉल फॉर अनदर रिसिव्हर ऑर इट मे कॉल फॉर अ डिफरंट कॉम्प्रेसर सेम इज विथ द टेम्परेचर की नाही अरे वेन आय एम बेकिंग इट फ्रॉम टू फोर्टी ॲट टू फोर्टी डिग्री प्लस मायनस फायव्ह डिग्री नो बट देन वेन आय एम बेकिंग इट इन अन ओव्हन त्या कोपऱ्यामध्ये टेम्परेचर पोचतच नाही वगैरे असं सगळं तो स्टडी करावा लागतो म्हणून म्हटलं depending on the process depending on the parameters the way of working and reducing the variations will be different mala vatte mi kadachit kahi tari ha tumcha awaz cut hoto hai sir aata awaz yeta baza ala yeto yeto yes sir apan ek standard process nusar apan 100% na apan calculate karat asto manje konta pan process bante म्हणजे हंड्रेड पर्सेंट करत असतो म्हणजे म्हणजे आपण हंड्रेड पर्सेंट त्याला एक म्हणजे सिक्स सिग्मा मध्ये आपण हंड्रेड पर्सेंट कॅल्क्युलेट करूनच त्याची व्हॅल्यू आपण डिसाईड करतो प्रोसेस कॅपेबिलिटीची 
नाही प्रोसेस कॅपेबिलिटीची व्हॅल्यू आपल्याला कॅल्क्युलेट करावी लागते पण सिग्मा म्हटला हा हा त्या सिग्मावर ती सीपी के व्हॅल्यू बदलेल किंवा सीपी पण बदलेल याला याला जनरली थम रूल्स आहेत की इफ द सीपी इज टू पॉइंट झिरो आर अब देन द प्रोसेस इज कॅपेबल सीपी के आपण वन पॉइंट थ्री थ्री किंवा वन पॉइंट सिक्स सेवनच्या वर नेण्याचा प्रयत्न करतो अँड वेन हाऊ वी डू दॅट इज ओनली टू रिड्यूस द व्हेरिएशन म्हणजे आधी माझं प्रेशर साडेचार ते साडेपाच होतं अगेन मी खूपच सिम्प्लिस्टिक करतोय त्याला रियालिटीमध्ये जेव्हा आपण ऍक्च्युअल प्रॉब्लेम हँडल करतो तेव्हा ते थोडं डिफिकल्ट असतं मी तुम्हाला साधं उदाहरण देतो की तुमचा रोज आपण घरून आपल्या कामाच्या ठिकाणी जाणे हा सुद्धा एक प्रोसेस आहे आणि माझी समजा रोजची वेळ साडेआठ वाजताच आहे आणि मग साडेआठ ते साडेआठ पस्तीस एवढ्या वेळात मी पोचलो तरच तो राईट टाइम धरला जातो अदरवाईज मला लेट मार्क होतो मला आधी पण पोचायचं नाही मला नंतर पण पोचायचं नाही आता ह्या सिम्पल प्रो आउटकम म्हणजे हा माझा आउटपुट झाला दिस वाय वाय इज नॉट आय हॅव टू रीच बिटवीन एट थर्टी टू एट थर्टी फाय आता त्याला हंड्रेड ऑफ इनपुट व्हेरिएबल्स आहे मी सकाळी उशिरा उठलो मला रस्त्यामध्ये ट्रॅफिक जाम होता काय पण अनेक रोजची आपल्याला मला जर रोज त्याच्यात पोचायचं असेल तर आय हॅव टू फाइंड वेज अँड कीप ऑन रिड्युसिंग दिस थिंग अँड इट विल बी डिफरंट फॉर मी इट विल बी डिफरंट फॉर समबडी एल्स मी सायकलने जातो कोणीतरी स्कूटरने येत असेल तिसरा कोणीतरी बसने येतो देन ही हॅज मोर चॅलेंजेस टू रीच विद इन टाइम सो टू रिड्यूस व्हेरिएशन ईच केस विल बी डिफरंट and each case needs to be handled depending on the variables and the causes that are causing that variation okay sir okay sir thank you sir okay any more queries please or should we uh, conclude the session konala vicharayta ase last thoda vel ahe aplya jawal okay then so uh, honorable shri anirudh pundey sir uh, we are extremely thankful to you for uh, taking time no, out honor of honor is your... mine sir mala mala chan vatlo sagalyanshi bolun i hope people found it somewhat useful it if not extremely useful and it added <laughs> some value <laughs> otherwise if it becomes a non value adding activity thank you sir thank you i have a problem <laughs> no no that is your i mean i know you are that way uh, a very sir, humble PPT. person ani sir ppt share karta il kai chi ho uh, sunday sir ho oh, mi ppt pathven tumhala i will send oh. you the ppt no okay. problem uh, okay pawar sir kai uh, ami uh, kaizen varti sarancha lecture ithe ghetlela hai baka ek tasar cha vidyarthyan sathi sudha far uh, uh, mulanna uh, avadla hota uh, acha हां बरं अनिरुद्ध सर औरंगाबादला आहे डॉक्टर पवार हेड ऑफ डिपार्टमेंट अच्छा ओके हा मोठी संस्था आहे ऑटोनॉमस कॉलेज आहे त्यानंतर आमचे डॉक्टर सिमी केरी सर आहेत हा हा चंद्रकांत सिमी केरी ए व्हेरी लर्न सर मी एक मिनिट बोलू हा बोला सर बोला पवार सर सर मी डॉक्टर पवार बोलतो मी इथे हेड ऑफ डिपार्टमेंट आहे गव्हर्नमेंट पॉलिटेक्निक औरंगाबादला तर आमच्या विद्यार्थ्यांसाठी सर फ्युचर मध्ये जर एखादा आपला असं व्हर्च्युअल मध्ये एक्सपर्ट लेक्चर ठेवता येईल का सर जरूर मला आनंद होईल म्हणजे माझ मी जर काही सांगू शकलो आणि त्यांना ते आवडलं बरं झालं मी जरूर करीन मला कळवा फक्त थोडासा वेळेचा हे असतो म्हणजे असं म्हणायलाही मला जरा संकोच होतो की फक्त शनिवारी किंवा रविवारी जरा जास्त चांगलं होईल कारण अदरवाईज मी साधारणपणे नऊ वाजल्यानंतर सांगता येत नाही किती वाजेपर्यंत काहीतरी चालू असतं पण शनिवार रविवारी मी निश्चित केव्हाही थोडा वेळ काढू शकेन आणि जरूर सांगा मला मला काही हरकत नाही मला वर्किंग सॅटर्डे ला तुम्ही घेऊ शकता वर्किंग सॅटर्डेला घेता येईल सरांचा हरकत नाही चालेल मी शनिवारी जास्त ऍडजस्ट करू शकतो हा सर मी सरांकडून घेतो सगळकडे सरांकडे आणि फक्त विषय वगैरे थोडा आधी सांगा मला करता येईल असं असेल तर मग मी जरूर करेन याच लाईन वर घेऊ सर मॅन्युफॅक्चरिंग चालेल काही हरकत नाही सो विथ दिस विथ द परमिशन ऑफ अवर रिसोर्स पर्सन अँड ऑल्सो दिपंट 
uh, I would like to conclude this session. Once again, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Shri Aniruddha Pundey, sir. Nee, nee. And wish I, you all the best. Uh, Raju ji, one minute. So, personally, I want to thank all of you and the opportunity given. And again, I'm sincerely hoping that you found it useful. Mala, yeah, yeah. Uh, feedback Alela Audel, Sangla White Duni Audel, Sangla Nemala, Utsaha Atel, Anan White Asel, Tarimala, Jimmy Ethamant like he committed to continuous improvement, Malakaitri improvement Kartail. So don't Maja hesitate. Vivagat please share. Kari Pana Hata Dite, Doctor Santos okay. Saudari, uh, Vijay Ushkeva, Jester Maja Sarkari Vivagatle. Uh, Saudari, sir? Yes, sir. Good afternoon. Haan, gale Good wala, afternoon. Uh, Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good May I just inform our Kunde, sir, that uh, Dr. Saudari and uh, Ushkewar, sir, and all others, they are the important pillars of this uh, faculty oh, development great. program. And, yes, uh, yes. It has yes. been, I mean, 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 uh, mm-hmm. तर, uh, teamwork exactly best, and that's yeah. what uh, i said in the beginning malakalpana i can imagine when we try to do how difficult it is especially under the current circumstances and challenges so so hats off to you sirs all of you thank great you, job thank you great much. job thank you sir uh, आपण आता इथे हे सेशन संपवूया यस थँक यू सो मच सर वन सेकंड